I'm Gory Vincent from the Wild Lake Penny Saver. And I'm Drew Edwards from the Down River Mop. And we're the Dollar Show Critics. Putting our asses in great danger in seats that haven't been reupholstered since the early 90s to find out if movies are, in fact, worth a dollar. And that can cost chafing. <laughs> it sure can. And on this week's Dollar Show, we have Gran Torino, the latest film by Clint Eastwood that he directed, starred, produced, and co-wrote the theme song to. Wow. It's a lot of things a to do. He's a hard-working man. He's a hard-working man, but Clint would have it any other way. Clint plays Walt Kowalski, a retired auto worker from Detroit, who lives in a slowly decaying neighborhood. One night while Clint's home sleeping, somebody tries to break in his garage and steal his Gran Torino. Well, in Clint fashion, he goes out there and he goes, what, he basically goes after him with a gun. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when it gets a little dicey with the neighbors. But when the mother finds out that the son's done this, she makes the son repay Walt in odd jobs throughout two weeks. Over the course of the two weeks, Clint dogs this kid all over the town. He's making them do this, do that, clean up this, dig up that. But he begins to actually like him after a while and takes him under his wing. He teaches him how to basically grow up and be like a man, start to act like a man, and, and teach him how to talk like a man too, which that, some of that dialogue I really enjoyed. Uh, yeah, I agree with you, Drew. This, was, uh, this wasn't a great movie, but this was a good movie. Uh, Clint, like you said, this was Clint's show all the way, and he has some great lines in this. He does play quite the racist old bastard in this thing, but you get the feeling he's never really let anybody in, gotten to know anybody, and you know, once he actually gets to know the neighbor and see that he's not this punk teenager he thought he was, he begins to let his guard down and like him, and it was kind of predictable, but overall, I still found it effective. The end did surprise me a little bit, and like you said, Clint, Clint Eastwood made the thing. I. I really liked it too. Oh, very good and very humorous at times as well. Oh, it was it was a it was a funny movie. Yeah, don't get me wrong. There had was... a lot of great one-liners in there, especially how to be, uh, how about to be a man with a WD-40 and the vice grips. Oh yeah, it, that was that was great stuff right there. It was great, especially the barber. I enjoyed. The barber was great. Yeah, I think he played uh, Marge's husband in Fargo, and also um, I, I did want to say though I thought the the kid who played Toe. The neighbor, Toe. Yeah, toe. yeah, he was a little edgy there. He was I a know. little bit uh, rough around the edges. He was. He yes. was a little amateur. It was a good try, but next to Clint, he looked a little out of whack. Uh, but all in all, I'm going to say, is this movie, Gran Torino, worth a dollar? I say, f yeah, this is worth a dollar. I mean, you could pay two dollars for this and it'd be a good movie. I'd like, say three dollars. Three, okay. Three dollars would be a great, great median price for this, but f yeah, go out and see this movie. For our DVD pick this week, I'm going to stick with Clint and go with my all-time favorite Clint Eastwood movie, the 1992 Oscar-winning classic, Unforgiven. Uh, this is a return to the Western for Clint. He plays William Money. Uh, he used to be a, a drunken killer, vicious killer of women and children, and uh, just terrible things he did, apparently, William Money. Riding up to the farm one day comes the Showfield Kid with a story of whores that were cut up in the town of Big Whiskey, Wyoming. As it happens, the rest of the whores have gotten together a bounty. There's a bounty. And they've put a price on the heads of the men responsible for cutting up the one whore in the beginning of the movie. Um, I shouldn't say whore so much. No, you should <laughs> <laughs> Will at first wants nothing to do with it. After all, he's, he's done with those gunfighting days, right? But he does have sick pigs on the farm, and he is kind of hard up for cash, so he decides, all right, what the hell, one more time. So he recruits his old buddy. Gun, gun toting buddy played by the great Morgan Freeman in one of his best performances ever, I think, uh, as Ned, his buddy Ned. Uh, this movie also features a great performance by Gene Hackman as the sheriff of Big Whiskey, a brutal man, dishes out some brutal beatings in this movie, has one of the best endings I've ever seen in a movie. I remember standing up in the theater when I saw it, and just, it was that good. You gotta rent this movie. Unforgiven, if you haven't already seen it, and even if you have, it holds up to multiple viewings well. Oh, I, I completely agree with you in, in every facet of that. I especially enjoyed Gene ha Hackman in this movie. Great villain, just, oh, we, he brought that role out so much. I, I wanted to kill him myself, yeah, but I think he would have kicked my ass. I'm pretty sure of it if I didn't have a gun, and if I did, well, we all know what happened then. You're right. It's a testament to Gene Hackman how he's probably like, you know, maybe 60 years old in this movie, and, and yet you feel afraid of him. You know, you're like, this guy could. He could he, he could just beat oh, you to a pulp. And I would not screw with him. little Bill. <laughs> no. And remember to turn in all your firearms when you get into Big Whiskey. Oh, that's right. You better. There's going to be trouble. <laughs> Big trouble. We'll be back next week with another Dollar Show and another DVD pick. Until then, we're the Dollar Show Critics, and we'll see you. Yeah, I mean, uh, Unforgiven. I just watched that like...